You're listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us again. We're going to be speaking with returning guest, Dr. Andrew Greenspan, joining us here from Janssen. He's going to be discussing some data from the Phase 3B C-View study about uh, patients with Crohn's disease. Welcome back to Health Professional Radio. I'm Dr. Greenspan. Thank you, Neil. It's great to be back. Give our listeners a little bit of your background for those who aren't familiar with you as a contributor. And what is that you love about what you do? Sure, I'd be happy to. Well, as you said, my name is Dr. Andrew Greenspan, and I lead the Immunology Medical Affairs Department at Janssen Immunology. And one of our products is uh, Stellara for Crohn's disease, which is what we studied in the CD study. And I have a passion for helping patients with chronic inflammatory disease, um, including patients with um, Crohn's disease, like the, like, the, like the disease that we studied in the study, but also I'm responsible for rheumatology um, products to treat patients with diseases like rheumatoid arthritis. And for dermatologic conditions, uh, we have wonderful drugs for patients who are suffering from psoriasis as well. And it's a terrific opportunity to help patients with these, with these chronic diseases and see, see them benefit from them. Now, as I said, the uh, C-View study is, uh, concerns Crohn's disease. Give us a, a little bit of insight into the treatment landscape of Crohn's, if you would. Sure. I'd be happy to, Neil. Um, before I tell you about the, um, the treatment, it might help just to explain to your listeners what Crohn's disease is. It's a chronic inflammatory Certainly. disease of the GI tract. It affects uh, almost a million people in the United States, and it can lead to, um, unfortunately, impacting their quality of life. It's a, it's a debilitating disease at times. It can be manifested with uh, severe abdominal pain and tenderness, weight loss, chronic di- diarrhea, which can sometimes be bloody, fevers. So um, it's wonderful that we have uh, treatment options. So um, back in the old days, when, when I was in training, there really were no treatments other than, than um, steroids, which, as you know, have terrible side effects of pe- putting people on bowel rest, which means not allowing them to eat for several days and cooling down their GI tract. Since 1998, when Remicade was approved, which was the first biologic approved, and actually it was developed by our company here, Janssen, um, is the first ever uh, monoclonal antibody ever approved for a chronic disease. And that really transformed the treatment landscape. And now it's common for patients with moderate to severe Crohn's disease to be treated with biologics, often TNF, tumor necrosis factor inhibitors, which can modulate the immune system and and really cool it down so people's GI tracts can heal, um, as well as other therapies like Stellara, which works differently and has an alternate mechanism of action, and that was approved in, in 2016. And there's some other drugs recently approved as well that work differently than TNFs that provide physicians with many different options. Now, I understand that this C-View study was a, a first-of-its-kind study when it comes to Crohn's disease. Yeah, exactly, Neil. And the reason we're so proud of this C-View study, um, which for your listeners, uh, it is a head-to-head study of Stellara versus Humira or amalimumab, which is one of those TNF inhibitors I mentioned for patients with moderate to severe Crohn's. And the reason we're so proud of it is because it's the first ever head-to-head study of two approved biologics for the treatment of Crohn's. You would think that studies comparing different drugs would be done by now in such a um, common disease like Crohn's, but this actually is the first time it's ever been done. And we're just super proud of, um, and I'm personally proud of the team who, to conduct this study and that we have these great results to share with your listeners. Let's talk about some of the uh, study results. Sure. I'd be happy to share with, uh, with your listeners that this was a randomized, double-blind, um, head-to-head study of both drugs so the patients didn't know which drug they were getting. We used, a, we used um, blinding so they didn't know if they were getting Stellara or Humira. And we evaluated them over the course of one year So we uh, saw them every couple of months and they were receiving the study drug. And at the end of the year, we um, evaluated the percentage of patients who were in what we call clinical remission so that they had significantly reduced um, signs and symptoms of the disease, like reduction of their abdominal pain or diarrhea or things like that. And um, to get to the results, what we call the primary endpoint or the, the, the chief question we're trying to answer this study is which one of these drugs um, has, would show superiority. So we actually were hypothesizing that Stellara would be superior to Humira in this particular study. And at the end of one year, what we found out was that both drugs had high rates of clinical remission. So for Stellara, about two-thirds of the patients, 
65% of the patients were in clinical remission at one year, and that compares to 61% of patients um, on Humira. In addition to clinical remission, we also looked at other important endpoints to um, people who treat Crohn's patients and to Crohn's patients themselves, including response, which is a lower bar than clinical remission. We also look at something called endoscopic remission and endoscopic response. And what that means is during the study, we had physicians doing endoscopy and scoping these patients and looking inside their GI tract to see if there's a visible reduction in the inflammation. Mm -hmm. And um, on that endpoint, we showed comparable results at one year. Both drugs were approximately 30% in terms of patients who achieved clinical remission, which is just such an important endpoint in studies like this. Not only do we want patients to feel good, but we want to see improvement of the lining of their GI tract. So basically, there was not one is better than the other. Uh, they seem to work equally well in patients. Were these patients re resistant to other therapies? Yeah, so this study was actually done, um, just to clarify one thing, in what we call bio-naive patients. Mm -hmm. So these patients actually were not um, failing other therapies. They were receiving biologics all for the very first time. And what we did show is that both treatments work very well and that we really can't say that one treatment was better than the other in terms of the primary endpoint. And we shared these results at DDW, and we shared some of the secondary endpoints as well. Um, and we'll be sharing some of the other, other endpoints where we looked at quality of life and some other things at, at future meetings. But you're absolutely right. In this study, we can't say that Delara was superior to Humira, but we are um, very impressed by the high rates of response and remission and endoscopic healing and how rapidly both drugs worked. Is there a, a guideline or a circumstance where a physician or patients should choose one over the other? Yeah, uh, that's a terrific question, Neil. So uh, physicians factor in many different considerations when they discuss with patients what drug they should put them on. So efficacy is one aspect. They also look at safety and um, we, we turn to the package insert or the labels that um, we work with the FDA to develop and, and the safety profiles for two drugs are different. So um, that's not something we really highlight in this study, although we did look at safety. We, we encourage physicians and physicians look at the different safety profiles of their drugs. So that's another consideration. Another important consideration is the convenience of the dosing. Mm -hmm. um, Humira is every two weeks injection or every eight weeks injection. So that may be a factor um, for physicians and patients. And also something called drug persistence. So one of the things we also look at in this study is how long patients stayed on the drug throughout the course of one year. Um, and that's something else that is important to physicians and patients. When you start a therapy like this, you want to um, know that you're going to stay on it and not have to discontinue it. Well, Andrew, give us a website where our listeners can go and learn much more about uh, this study and about Janssen in general. Well, they can learn more about Stellara at stellarhcp.com. The results of this study, though, are not available on the website. Okay. They um, can be uh, obtained through Janssen by calling our 1-800-Janssen um, um, Medical Information Center, and they can request uh, the results of the CDU study, and those results will be sent to them electronically. And where can we find more uh, about Janssen? On the Janssen.com website. I appreciate you, as always, uh, coming back, and um, I'm looking forward to our next conversation, Andrew, okay? Yeah, thanks so much, Neil. It's a pleasure speaking with you today. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with returning guest, Dr. Andrew Greenspan of Janssen Pharmaceuticals. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional radio.